Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 State of the University Address. Um, last year, when I addressed you, uh, we call this All University Address. Um, but since then, we had uh, about 16 town hall meetings, uh, and I consider those All University Addresses. So. So we changed the name to uh, State of the University Address. Um, before I start, uh, let us introduce our new faculty and staff members. All right, I will go through and normally we would have these people stand up and wave, but obviously it's a little difficult to do in this format. So we do want to welcome these new employees. So if you see them around campus, uh, give them a warm Southwest welcome. Of course, some of them have already been here for a while because these are new employees since our last uh, meeting last fall. Uh, Ellie Ahmed is in college now. Adam Alford is an assistant professor of agronomy. Jeremy Bond is a general maintenance worker. Josh Benning is the new admission counselor. Gus Condezzo is back also as an admission counselor. Pruvera Cooter is an assistant professor of Spanish. Tim Farrell is another general maintenance worker. Steph Fry is an office and administrative specialist. Lynn Gluck Peterson is a charter certificate liaison and recruiter. Pam Hess is an office and administrative specialist. And Meredith Hyde is the director of annual giving. Faith Johnson joined us as an assistant professor of nursing. Aaron Klein is associate director of Mustang Pathways and associate director of equity inclusion. Paul Langseth is assistant to the director in TRIO. Tiffany Leach is a general maintenance worker. Mike Manns is also a general maintenance worker. Taylor McKittrick is a new admission counselor. Mei Li Muavu is the director of international student services and Stella Ochukwu is the Nursing Student Services Coordinator. Also, John Parker is new head tennis coach and admission counselor, also an instructor. John Payne is a general maintenance worker. And Christine Quisley is assistant professor of education. Also, Lori Reese is an assistant professor of special education. Stacey Susner is a human resources technician. George Taylor III is the assistant professor of management. David Tolliver III is an Assistant Director of Student Services and Advising Center, and Elliot Vaughn is an Assistant Professor of Environmental Science. Thank you, Bill. Um, so normally we would have them um, stand up and give them a round of applause, but uh, uh, in this uh, new setting, it's not possible, but uh, we are so glad to have them. And I am thrilled that we have so many of the new um, faculty and staff joining us. Thank you for uh, coming to SMSU. Now I have a couple of new cabinet members to introduce. Well, um, first, uh, someone who is new to this position, but not new to our campus, Richard Shearer. Uh, Rich started in last November, uh, November 12th. Uh, he has been with us since then. But prior to uh, starting in this position, Rich was uh, at SMSU, I think as the director of admissions and then uh, he went to uh, St. Cloud University and came back. I'm glad he is with us uh, joining our team. Next, we have our new provost, uh, Dr. Ross Westwood. Um, Ross came to us from uh, Grandview University in Des Moines, Iowa where he was the Dean of Humanities and Education. Um, uh, he has also been um, an interim Dean of uh, Social and Natural Sciences 
at Grand View University. So he has, he started on July 1st of this year and um, we are very glad to have him join our uh, team. Okay, now I will uh, introduce the rest of our president's cabinet. Uh, they are not in any particular order. This, this is the order in which I received the pictures. So um, I will go through their names and then again at the end, normally we give a round of applause, but uh, uh, this time we will not do that. Um, so first, uh, Dean Amy Schaus. Um, she is the Dean of Humanities and Fine Arts. Um, Dean uh, Onyehala, uh, Rafael Onyehala. Um, Dean of uh, Business uh, um, and Professional Studies. Vice President Deb Kirkart. Associate Vice President Scott Crowell. Vice President Bill Mosel, our CIO, Dan Bond. Again, our new provost, Ross Wasved. Campus Diversity Officer, Jay Lee. Our CHRO, or Human Resources Director, Nancy Olson. Um, uh, Director of Athletic Director AD, uh, Chris Himaleski, and again, um, Interim Executive Director of Enrollment Man Management, Rich Shira. I am very glad to work with this team, and um, uh, these people are working diligently to advance our mission of our campus. So thank you and uh, they deserve a round of applause, but um, uh, we will uh, skip that part. It has been wonderful to work with the bargaining unit leaders in my first year. I'm very grateful to their leadership as I was learning about the university and the culture. So. Thank you, I want to um, introduce all the bargaining unit leaders. Again, in no particular order, um, Tim Besky, Carol Basut, Tim Alcon, uh, Stacy, uh, Sosna, um, Diane uh, Holmes, Sarah Fear, and Tony Nubayo. Thank you for your leadership and everything you do for SMSU. I want to introduce our new student government president, Esther Olubora Day. Esther, thank you for taking a leadership position at SMSU, and we are very glad to have you as the student government president. Um, so uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, we have outgrown our university structure. Um, so we have made few changes this past month. Uh, mo uh, all of you received an email from me last Friday. Um, going forward, Vice President Moso will be focused on uh, government relations, communication, and marketing. And Stacy Frost and Nathan Hallflett will um, be the interim executive directors of foundation. In addition to that, uh, everyone who is involved in uh, recruitment will now have a direct or indirect reporting 
to executive director of enrollment management to have a, um, a cohesive approach to enrollment management. Okay, now I want to tell you my address today will be different this year. Um, many people ask me if I am going to uh, have the singing part we had last year. Um, no, we are not going to sing. Sorry, Dr. Kingsbury. Um, and uh, maybe we can uh, think about that for next year. Um, uh, also, we will not be able to entertain any questions at the end uh, because of the format we are using. So um, I want to tell you, we have a town hall meeting set up for, uh, on September 17th at 11 a.m. If you have any questions about anything that I say today, um, I'll be able to answer those questions then, okay? Um, I want to tell you that uh, most presidents um, start their state of the university address by saying state of the university is very strong. Um, I want to do it a little differently. Jeff Bell gave a great impersonation when he did the state of assessment at SMSU a few months ago. Um, what I will do is uh, this audience that I have is one of the most intelligent audiences in the country. So I will let you decide whether the state of the university is strong or weak, okay? But I will give you some statistics and uh, information during the speech. Last year, when I addressed you in August, I failed to include one important planning item. So um, I want to apologize for that. That is to plan for a pandemic. To be fair, I haven't seen any of you include that in your planning documents either. Well, um, as you know, it came out of nowhere uh, and uh, it surprised all of us. At that point, I never could have imagined how much it's going to disrupt our world, our university, and what we do day to day. But we are remarkably resilient. Thanks to a Herculean effort by our faculty and staff, we put all our classes online and everyone teleworked in March, starting from March. And we were able to get our students to the finish line and finish the spring semester strong. Um, so uh, that was inspiring, how people work together and how hard people work to get this done. I want to thank Chancellor Mahotra and the entire uh, system staff for their guidance and counseling throughout these uncertain times. Uh, it, as a new president, their counseling was very important to me. So thank you, Chancellor. I know he's not listening, but still I want to thank him. I want to thank all the faculty and staff members who made calls to each and every student in spring semester when they were taking classes online to see how online learning is going and uh, to comfort them. That not only helped students uh, in their education, but also helped the university to retain these students, so thank you. I also want to thank Vice President Kirkhart and the Business Resumption Team 
for uh, their planning and um, uh, arranging everything for us to uh, navigate through the pandemic and still doing that. Uh, our fall plans have gone very smoothly so far. I'm sure there, are, there were a few bumps on the way but for the most part, things most part things have gone well. I have to be careful not to jinx that, but um, things are going well already. Um, so thank you for the team uh, for doing that. Um, general uh, maintenance workers work throughout the pandemic to um, uh, make our mission forward, uh, move our mission forward. So I want to thank them as well. I want to thank Dr. Zapka for agreeing to allow me to teach part of his calculus course this fall. So I can be in the front line with all of you in advancing our mission. So thank you. I want to thank Dan Bond, our CIO and the entire IT staff for everything they did to get us through the uh, pandemic. Uh, we functioned very smoothly during uh, this time last spring when all our classes were taught online and everyone teleworked. They gave us support and they continue to support us in the fall semester. They have set up 21 Zoom enabled classrooms for fall semester and seven more will be ready when they get cameras that they ordered back in June. So thank you to the entire IT department. Um, now I want to tell you in spite of the pandemic, there are many great things that are happening at SMSU and that happened at SMSU also. So uh, let me go through some of these accolades we received recently, well, last year. So we were ranked seventh in the country by Best Value Colleges. That was before the pandemic. We were named safest campus in Minnesota. SMSU was recognized by case uh, with the 2020 Educational Fundraising Award for Overall Performance. CASE stands for Council for Advancement and Support for Education. Number one, nationally in military friendly schools uh, among the schools of our size. It's number one nationally. Number eight, nationally for most affordable online master's degree. Number seven, for lowest total cost for international students in the North and the Midwest region. The list goes on and on. I'll go through this very quickly. Number seven, nationally for hospitality degree program. Number eight, nationally for most affordable online master's degree for out-of-state students. Number 14, nationally for best affordable math and science degree. Number 12, nationally for best affordable sociology. Number 13, nationally for best affordable psychology. Number 14, nationally for best affordable marketing degree. Number fourth in Minnesota for RN to BSN. Number 18, nationally for online masters in education, number 14 nationally for physical education, ranked in the top 50 for masters in teaching uh, English as a second language, number 26 nationally for best early childhood education program. So, um, except for the person who gave this list, uh, Jim Tate, I don't think any of you would have uh, thought that we had so many accolades last year in spite of this pandemic. It's a long list. 
let me talk a little bit about our fall enrollment. First, let me tell you our uh, goals from my last uh, all uh, university address. These were the goals I gave to people. Increase the new freshman class by 7%. We want to stay flat with the last year's total enrollment. Uh, increase the retention rate for uh, to 70 from 67% and recruit 20 students to Mustang Pathway program. These were goals that we came up with uh, before we heard about the pandemic, right? This was in uh, last August. So let's go to the next slide to tell you where we are now. We increased the new freshman class by 17.5%. Remember the goal was 7%. Headcount is up by eight students. Not much, but it's much better in this environment, and especially uh, after I will tell you how some areas are down, some areas are up. Uh, we increased the cohort retention rate to 74%. Remember, the goal was 70%. I was told by Alan Matzner, who is the director of IR, that this is the highest rate in the recent history. He thinks highest in 20 years. So uh, kudos to Brittany Kroll and her team. Uh, we recruited 18 students to Mustang Pathway program. So I want to give kudos to our entire admission staff for increasing the new freshman class by 17.5%. Um, so Rich Shearer and Matt Subi and the entire admission crews deserve a lot of kudos for what they have done. And it's a, a team effort. There are lots of other people who worked on getting this uh, number increased. Um, continuing on enrollment, we have uh, uh, degree seeking undergraduate headcount goes, uh, went up by 28 students. Graduate enrollment is down by 15. Um, graduate return rate is up, by, uh, it's at 69%. Again, Alan told me this is the best in last five years. International students are down by 39 and that is uh, expected in a pandemic situation. Uh, nursing is up by 37 students. And here's a very interesting statistic. 32.6% of our uh, incoming freshmen are students of color. It's an increase from 21.5%. So remember, this is a remarkable achievement and uh, um, we are getting uh, close to the diversity that exists in our local um, high schools. We have students from 25 states. I want to also mention that our FYE is slightly down, but we have uh, several uh, graduate students who can still register for our education cohort programs, I hope that will um, change that situation. So again, I think uh, lots of people deserve credit for what they have done uh, to get us to this point. Um, now uh, I want to uh, look at some achievements by our faculty and staff. So let's go through this less quickly. The Mustang Promise was launched before the pandemic. Um, we embarked on a new marketing and branding campaign thanks to Vice President Musso and 
his team. Um, I'm sure all of you have seen our theme, Discover, Engage, Lead. And uh, that is working well. We started a program called Full Measure. Uh, this uh, was started by the admission team. They, this is how they communicate with uh, potential students, admitted students, registered new students. Um, it's uh, texting um, uh, software and also it allows us to organize and allow our admission counselors to communicate freely with these uh, new incoming students and potential students. Uh, student bridge videos, I hope all of you have seen this uh, on our website and it looks very nice. Um, I think we are putting a new uh, campus visit through Student Bridge as well. There are some uh, testimonials that you should look at. It looks amazing. Thank you to the admissions team for doing that. Uh, as I mentioned we, before, faculty and staff called almost every student last spring um, to comfort them that uh, helped retain many of our students, um, even to this fall. Um, and here's another interesting um, fact. We are a finalist for a success grant. Thanks to our new provost, uh, Provost Vasved, uh, Rich Shearer, Lori Wynia, and um, Brittany uh, Kroll. Um, they applied for this uh, grant uh, and we are a finalist. Uh, we will know by September 15th. It's a $600,000 grant for three years. So thank you for your diligent work there. Dr. Greenfield continued to conduct his research with RALCO that helps many of our students to not only conduct research, but also uh, get jobs um, in many places. RN to BSN program was accredited by CCNE. That's a Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. The Educational uh, Administration and Leadership Program, EDAL, has been accredited by the Minnesota Board of School Administrators for the next five years. These are very uh, heavy liftings. I know there are many people who work behind the scene to achieve this. So thank you for all that you have done to get these accreditations. Some of the new programs that we started last year, I want to quickly go through those. Um, as you may have heard, we started 12 online programs and we have several students taking those this fall. Um, Lori Wynia worked very hard and thanks to the two deans uh, department chairs and uh, uh, faculty members who created these new programs. Uh, we have a new cybersecurity uh, certificate at the graduate level, and we have all the um, approvals to start a data science bachelor's degree. We are working on a uh, master's degree in both areas. Thank you to the math department for doing this. Mustang uh, Promise was launched and uh, many students are uh, inquiring about our Mustang Promise. This was done before the pandemic. We started eSports, thanks to Spencer and our uh, AD 
Chris Simileski, we brought in 12 a new freshmen into eSports. I think there are about 30 students altogether in eSports. We started trap shooting. We brought nine new students to trap shooting. And I am not uh, aware of how many total students are in that. So thanks, uh, Mike Lenz, for leading that effort. Now I want to briefly touch on our goals for next year. Okay, we want to complete our new strategic plan. Remember our strategic plan ended last year. So um, Jeff Bell and our new provost um, Ross will work with the strategic planning committee to come up with our next strategic plan uh, for next five years. Um, we also want to implement our Equity 2030 plan. Um, we are well underway with a, a team of 22 to uh, uh, implement our Equity 2030 plan. Um, I work with uh, 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 Vice President Moso um, to get some programming in our, on our TV channel. And uh, I think our first program is going to be on the 14th of September. Um, that is going to host our new provost. Uh, so it's already happening. Uh, and we want to implement new academic programs, as I said before. I want to start this 15 to finish initiative. We uh, talked about this in our um, president's cabinet and I've talked to a few other people about that. 15 to finish is a complete College America initiative that I, uh, we like to start at SMSU. What it does is it just um, market to our students the fact that it takes 15 credit hours every semester for them to finish in four years. It's simple math, but people don't really think about it. And some people might think that our students can take 15 credit hours be uh, for different reasons but our advisors should at least tell them if they don't take 15 credit hours every semester, they cannot finish in four years. So, um, so I, uh, we will push 15 to finish initiative this year from the student success uh, office with uh, Brittany Kroll. Um, that, uh, and also I want to start an SI program. Um, again, I have been um, talking to people, talking with the provost uh, and so on about how we can implement a supplemental instruction program. Last year, we were successful in starting a very good partnership with Lake Superior College. Um, we also talked to a few other two-year institutions, but uh, to my knowledge, none of those uh, were finished completely. Uh, so we are not at a point where we can um, bring in students to our campus from those programs. So I want to take Lake Superior College Partnership as a model and start at least four new programs this year. So let me talk uh, a little bit about enrollment goals. Uh, nobody has seen this before, so these are brand new and it might be, uh, this might be shocking to some people today, but uh, we increase our new freshman class by 17.5% this semester. So by next fall, I'd like to increase it again by 10% over the increase that we have now. 
Um, these are doable goals. Um, I want to increase the total enrollment by 3%. Remember this year, it's pretty much flat. So next year, we must try to increase our enrollment by 3%. Um, increase the cohort retention to 78%. Remember, it was at 67%. We are at seven, little over 74% now. I want to increase it to 78%. I would have said increase it to 75%, but we are almost there. So um, I want to put a goal uh, of 78%. 74% um, is pretty high uh, for a school of our size. My ultimate goal is to be at Eight or about eighty percent of uh, our cohort retention, um, which is similar to uh, the uh, retention rates achieved by flagship camp campuses. So that's where we want to be um, in few years. And I want to um, uh, recruit eighty students to Mustang Pathway Program next year. That's doable. Uh, okay, now um, I want to talk about SMSU's new vision. Um, I'm sure all of you have seen this before um, today, but uh, the new vision is SMSU aspires to be recognized throughout Minnesota and beyond for being an inclusive and student-centered university. And then we came up with these uh, value statements. These go hand in hand with our uh, branding uh, statements, our tagline, which is discover, engage, lead. So uh, one thing I can tell you, last August when I did the old university address, I gave an, a new vision for SMSU. It took us a year, almost a year, to adapt that. While I'm not very happy about uh, anything taking a year to adapt, I am very happy with uh, how it shaped at the end, especially our value statements and things like that. So I'm okay with us taking about a year. Now I want to talk a little bit about equality versus equity. I have shown uh, a picture a little similar to this before. Um, I saw this picture without the third component uh, reality uh, about five, six years ago until I saw that, uh, until I saw this picture, I didn't fully grasp the difference between the equality and equ equity. This very clearly show why we need to achieve equity, not equality. Um, I know many people are having this discussion on campus. We don't want to go back and blame anyone for what happened before. Going forward, let's uh, look at how we can be uh, how we can achieve equity on our campus. I wanted to include this reality, but uh, it's sad and funny at the same time when you look at that. This little guy is actually in a hole in the ground. So, so I thought I would uh, share that with you. I want to talk briefly about the rolling coal incident that happened in Marshall. Uh, I was saddened by the fact that our students had to face uh, such racist act a few days after they came to SMSU. I'm very grateful to the faculty and staff and um, um, community members in the Marshall community, including the mayor, who not only condemned 
they stress this X, but also offered help to our students. After working with uh, some uh, faculty and staff, our students who were affected told us it happened, it's over, uh, let it rest. That's what we did. Okay, let me remind you over 32% of our incoming uh, freshman class is students of color. It is vitally important for our survival to retain these students. That is why it is very important for us to welcome them and show the, uh, them that we value their presence. Um, so that is why we need to be more inclusive as a campus. Let me be clear, for us to be recognized throughout Minnesota and beyond as an inclusive and student-centered university, we need to look at everything we do as a university through an equity lens. We have to ask the question uh, how every decision we make impact our students. For us to be a thriving university, uh, we must act now before it's too late. So as I explained before, uh, it is not only a moral imperative, but also an economic imperative. 32% of our new incoming class it consists of uh, students of color. And it, this number is only going to increase. Our increase in enrollment will come mostly from uh, those uh, minority students. That is why it's important for us to embrace diversity, inclusion, and equity. I urge each and every one of you to join our campus efforts in making SMSU the most inclusive and student-centered university in Minnesota and beyond. Thank you, have a blessed day and be safe. Thank you very much.